This episode of JTIG Apple is made possible by Slick Wraps, where you can make your phone unique with their high quality skins. Hey what's up everyone, it's Justin here, and a package showed up at my door the other day, and I picked it up, didn't care to really open it for about 3 days, but I finally have, and it is the iPod Touch 6th generation 2015. Again, if you care. So quickly cutting open this box, it brought back a lot of memories, and I know you've seen a ton of unboxings by now, but... The iPod actually dates all the way back. When I was about 10 to 11 years old, it was not only my first Apple device, which I saved about two years to buy, but it was also the first video I have ever recorded and never uploaded to the internet. So here it is. Hello YouTube, today I've got the unboxing of the iPod Touch 2nd generation 8GB by Apple. But a couple years later when the iPod Touch 4th generation came out, it was the first camera I'd ever owned and I uploaded my first YouTube video about the iPod Touch while recording with the iPod Touch. And I created my first 300 accessory reviews on my first channel with that iPod. But fast forward to 2012 and JTEC Apple TV, the iPod Touch 5th generation was one of the first devices I unboxed on the channel. What's up everyone, Justin with JTIG Apple here, and today I'm here to do the unboxing of the iPod Touch 5th generation. So since it has the same packaging and contents, why not just watch this unboxing? And the new thing that Apple introduced, which is a loop, which I found pretty stupid, but- And sure enough, Apple listened three years later, and there isn't a loop on the new 6th generation iPod. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that trip through memory lane, but let's go ahead and focus on the iPod Touch 6th generation itself. And it is pretty much what I had expected, but the question is why didn't it come earlier or release near the time of the iPhone 6? The iPod Touch features Apple's latest A8 processor with M8 coprocessor with 1GB of RAM, the same 4-inch retina display with a 1136 by 640 resolution and 326 ppi, and also an improved 8 megapixel f2.4 aperture camera. So pretty much putting it almost on par with the iPhone 6 in terms of specs, which is exactly what I expected, but like I mentioned, I was expecting this to come about sometime last year. But overall, I was one of those who was somewhat excited when this was announced, as I have been using iPods over the past few years kind of as spare devices, and it simply just couldn't keep up with the latest operating systems at all. The levels of lag I experienced was pretty much unusable, but Apple aims to fix that on the 6th generation of the iPod Touch and kind of have it keep up with the software updates down the road. And I'm sure like a lot of people you are wondering, what is the future of the iPod line? The iPod Touch is also available in a new pink, blue, and gold color and this is like the first device that I didn't pick up in gold when it was an option. Upon setting up the iPod Touch, I found it to be much more responsive and that is about what I expected. There isn't any noticeable lag, but I also noticed it wasn't as snappy as the iPhone 6 as a daily user. But I also know quite a few people were complaining about the fact that Apple didn't integrate stuff like a fingerprint sensor, a 4.7 inch display like the iPhone 6, and really the only design thing they did was add a few colors and get rid of the loop. And although I can agree the fact that the keyboard feels extremely small after using the iPhone 6 for almost a year, it kind of makes sense that Apple didn't make all those design changes to the iPod Touch 6th generation as it is geared towards a younger audience who isn't going to be buying an iPhone and if they made this too close to the iPhone 6, it would pretty much make a competing product. Opening up the camera app itself, the camera does look better for sure. The iPod Touch 5th generation camera was quite outdated at the 5 megapixel mark and just switching around it seems pretty responsive and it is also able to take burst photos as well. And just opening up Geekbench here and giving you guys an idea of the spec upgrades, the iPod Touch is clocked in at 1.1 GHz which is slightly lower than the 1.38 GHz on the iPhone 6. So now that the score has been revealed you get 1373 on the single core compared to 1633 on the iPhone 6 and 2417 for multi-core compared to 2920 on the iPhone 6. So it is a reasonable upgrade compared to the previous generation, but it isn't on par with the iPhone 6 yet, which is really no problem at all, as the real world tests speak for itself. The benchmark was just a bit of a reference. From launching Real Racing 3, I also want to show you the gaming performance on the iPod Touch 6 generation. And on the previous generation, I didn't really notice any huge issues, but like I mentioned, this update was sort of just to 
future proof it and lengthen the life of the iPod touch line I guess for a couple more years. And I have to say, although I'm a terrible driver as you can see here, trying to avoid the glare and play in front of the camera, the game actually performed very well and I didn't notice any issues at all. But now shifting our focus slightly over to the camera, as it is one of the other improvements that I thought was pretty big on the iPod Touch 6 generation. Like I mentioned, you do have a 2.4 aperture 8 megapixel rear facing camera which does not have the sapphire crystal lens which is seen on the iPhone 6, but that is just a minor difference. And also the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. Taking a look at a few quick photos here, there is some noise that is noticeable on some parts, but the overall photo quality when well lit was pretty good. Why not a quick little selfie in my ridiculous shirt, which by the way I do not wear out to public. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, you do have the same 4 inch retina display with a 1136 by 640 resolution with a PPI of 326. The iPod Touch measures in at 4.86 inches tall by 2.31 inches wide and 6.1 millimeters thick. And just to wrap things up here, I have to say that the iPod Touch is a pretty good update if it hadn't come so damn late. With the iPod Touch coming in at under 200 bucks for the 16 gigabyte model going all the way up to the new 128 gigabyte model, this is definitely a great device which is kind of focused towards the age range of I'd say 10 to 15, which is around the age that I was obsessed with the iPod Touch and it was my primary device, which I used all the time. Though you might be surprised nowadays by how many kids are getting flagship smartphones at such a young age. Before we head out, let's take one last look at our sponsor. Slickwraps is a high-end skin manufacturer specializing in ultra-precise skins for every major device since 2010. With device manufacturers today spending countless hours and millions of dollars of their design on form factor, cases cover up the true intent of the manufacturer and hides the design. Slickwraps allows you to keep the device's design and feel while adding some cool protection. Their top quality skins are available for a very wide variety of devices in multiple color options and finishes. Go ahead and check them out and for JTAG Apple viewers, they were kind enough to offer 20% off on any order by using the coupon code JTEC. But other than that, this has just kind of been a throwback unboxing, I guess, and my impressions of the iPod Touch 6th generation. But be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below as to what memories you have of the iPod Touch and what you think of it now. I'll see you all in the next video.